these bikes are your proper entry ticket into the big bike world. You see, compared to the 650s, these have enough engine, enough power, enough feel in them to either intimidate you or to make you go bonkers when you experience that power band. Once you've experienced motorcycles like these, it doesn't matter where you're going on from here. Other street fighters, super sports, adventure motorcycles, they'll always remind you of that first experience you had with these motorcycles. That wind in your hair, that wind blast, that power band, that rush, all of that is something that these bikes will introduce you to. So if you wanted to enter that big bike world with either one of these, which one should it be? Let's find out. The BMW and the Triumph take different approaches in the design department. The Speed Triple has always been a friendly machine and the compact size of this motorcycle plays an important role. The bug-eyed face is a bit polarizing, but certainly very unique. Move past the signature element and the rest of the bodywork looks racy, thanks to the inspiration from the Daytona Super Sport machine. I have a soft spot for this LCD display and the analog clock. I think it looks quite nice while riding the motorcycle as well. But then in the wake of new age competition, this has started looking quite dated, especially compared to competition like that, where bikes have now started wearing a big tablet on their forehead. The F900R wears BMW's new design language for its roadsters, where things are, well, symmetrical. The headlamp is shaped like a diamond and shines just as brightly, and illuminates the road a little bit better than the Street Triple. It also has tons of detail to it, which you will only notice when it is turned off. The 900R looks big no matter what angle you look at it from. And that also makes it a bigger attention grabber than the triple. The tank shrouds, the protection around the engine and the twin pot exhaust make it look fuller too, giving it a higher Street Fighter cred than the Triumph. Adding more room is the TFT console, which will stick its neck out and catch bugs and debris flying from motorcycles in front of it, but it also provides surprisingly good wind deflection at highway speeds up to 120 km an hour. It also displays a ton of info in a crisp and intuitive way. Design is a personal preference of course, but which one you should choose really depends on what you want from your motorcycle. If you want the motorcycle to be compact with relaxed ergonomics, the Street Triple is what you want to choose. But if you want that motorcycle to feel big, you want that head forward, aggressive riding stance, then it's the BMW that you want to go with. While the 900R feels bulky at first, on the move and through the corners, you will realize that it doesn't feel as top heavy as it looks. It uses a light, plastic welded tank which helps that cause. The steel frame that the F900 uses makes it noticeably heavier compared to the Street Triple which uses the aluminum twin spar frame. Now, the character of these two motorcycles is further distinguished with the suspension choices that they have to offer. the 900R sold here doesn't get the Pro variant, it has the mechanical preload adjustment at the rear, while the front employs fat 43mm forks. Out of the box, the setup feels right on the money. It is supple over road imperfections and has the right amount of stiffness for sweeping corners that are typically seen on mountain roads. Track riders may want a stiffer setup at the front though, but the suspension isn't adjustable. This is where the Street Triple outshines the 900R with a fully adjustable suspension that needs tools to tinker with, but one that allows you to fine-tune the setup for road or track use. Set it up right and the Street Triple continues to be that friendly, obedient pet even when you give it the whip around the bends. The Street Triple is a lot forgiving to wrong gear selections or even changes that you will make to your riding line even mid-corner. The lightweight of the motorcycle enables that. It also makes it a lot more manageable and turn-ins require a far lesser effort. The only gripe is that the rear suspension feels a bit squishy in comparison to the front, so getting that setup right is absolutely important. In comparison, the BMW, it feels a lot more stable through the corners. In fact, it feels that stable despite having more travel in its suspension 
compared to the Street Triple. What complements the Triumph's cornering capabilities further are the tyres. The Pirelli Rosso 3 feels stickier and far more confidence inspiring than the Bridgestone S21Rs that ship on the F900R. That said, the F900R carried better corner speeds than the Street Triple on our usual mountain roads. The Parallel Twin Engine is a gem and its 270 degree firing order makes it feel and perform like a V-twin. It has tons of low end grunt for traffic light drags and tight switchbacks and though there is a bit of a flat spot in the torque between the 5 to 600,000 rpm mark, it starts churning out a second burst of power between the 6 to 9,000 rpm mark. Keep it in that zone around winding roads like these and the S900R will ensure that you are always ahead of your other middleweight buddies when you are riding on roads like these. Now that said, you have to keep the throttle or the engine beyond the 6000 rpm mark or under the 5000 rpm mark. If you are lingering in that 5 to 6000 rpm zone constantly, that flat spot that I talked about, that will lead to a choppy throttle and through the corners, well, it can sort of make it a little unnerving. What is really missed on this motorcycle, with that kind of tracking performance, however, is a quick shifter. Of course, it's available as an optional accessory, but that's, again, a lot more money. On the straights, the Street Triple will outrun the BMW. The superior power-to-weight ratio shows in the acceleration figures of the Triple. The 765cc engine's meat lies between the 6 to 10,000 RPM mark. But below that zone, the engine feels subdued. That has its advantages in the city though. The Street Triple is not like a barking dog all the time and that friendly character is something that a lot of people appreciate and like this motorcycle for. In comparison, the 900R, it's a hooligan. And I'm sure there are a lot many out there who will like this bike for that character. Unsurprisingly, the difference in the engine characters reflects in the fuel economy too. The edge of the seat entertainment that the F900R offers makes it quite thirsty even than its touring sibling, the XR. You will burn through the 13-litre tank far quickly than your street triple buddies. Don't be surprised to see equal points on our score sheet for refinement for both these motorcycles. Now, the street triple has that whistle at idle. It has a typical inline soundtrack that is associated with big bikes. And then it has that smooth rev buildup that a lot of you will like. At the same time, the F900's parallel twin engine, it has engineered vibrations and that makes an instant connect with the rider. And I think in terms of the soundtrack, it does sound very nice. But again, like I said, many people associate the sound of a big bike with the sound of an inline and that is where the Street Triple edges ahead. Both motorcycles come with riding modes for rain and road. But the Triple goes a step further and adds a sport mode too which will reduce the intrusion from the traction control and the anti-lock braking systems. Honestly though, the electronics on the Street Triple don't feel as well-tuned as the ones on the BMW. A simple telltale light on the TFT console is the only thing that will tell you that the traction control probably kicked in and it saved you some insult and injury and worked discreetly in the background. That's how well-tuned the electronics are. In fact, it's so good that you start missing that dynamic or the dynamic pro mode on this motorcycle. With those modes, I think this will be even crazier than what it already is. In comparison to the BMW, Triumph's traction control system will remind you of its presence over every speed breaker that you cross, making it far too naggy. That is the only fly in the ointment for what is otherwise a well-rounded, feature-rich package. The rain mode on both the bikes kills their enthusiasm to a fair extent. And it seems like this mode is squarely aimed at newbies to the genre more than the oldies returning to the joy of motorcycling. So as all the points add up on the points table, the F900R falls short by a tiny margin. You won't go wrong choosing this motorcycle. It's an excellent product. It will welcome you to the BMW scheme of things, give you that fabled German engineering and build quality. Each and every component on this motorcycle, the fit and finish is top notch. It will make you feel good about your investment. But then again, when you look at the Street Triple, it comes across as the more value for money offering. For lesser money, it gives you a more powerful engine, adjustable suspension, the quick shifter. It's also got a marginally lesser maintenance cost. I think in the long run, 
that makes a lot of difference. The sum of all these things in a way justifies why we see so many of these every Sunday morning at every biker get together. This then is the clear winner of this test. Mm -hmm.